Oh, boy, oh, boy. Mother Nature, how are you, darling? <laughs> I have Mother Nature here today. I've been trying to get you so long. Dita Dietrich, come I on. Can't, I can't believe that you still remember Mother Nature. It's been off the air for a long, Has it? long time. How long has it been? It was on the air for 10 years, from 71 to 81. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we went off the air in 81. Hello. Yeah. But, a long time. But, wow, what a... What a career off of that. Yeah, did that, well. You, I know you made a lot of money on that, but did it really interfere with other things? No, not at all. As a matter of fact, my career up until Mother Nature had been in New York and uh -huh. doing Broadway, doing right. off-Broadway, doing stock, whatever. Right. But the minute that the Mother Nature commercial came out, all the phone calls started to come in from Hollywood because mm -hmm. they were very curious to see what that broad looked like or was like or mm -hmm. what was the story behind her. So I was doing a Broadway play at the same time as that first year of Mother Nature and I had to keep coming out here uh -huh. to do screen tests. I screen tested with quite a few people, none of which I got. Right. And so I go back mm -hmm. to New York and I was doing the show, as I say. Which show were you doing at the second? Uh, uh, Prisoner of Second, second Avenue, Avenue. Yeah, with Peter who? Falk, Lee Grant. What a wonderful, wonderful cast. guy. Yeah. yeah, we had a good time. Uh huh. I, I did that for over a year. Uh huh. And then finally, the siren song, Money. Uh huh. Got me out here. It did get you out here. Oh didn't yeah. It? You like California? <laughs> Oh, I love California. You grew up where? Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh! And where I love Pittsburgh. the snow is up to here in the winter, uh -huh. you know. And then I went to New York when I was a kid, and the snow was up to As here. As an actress? Yes. When mm -hmm. did you decide to be an actress, Gina Dietrich? Well, let's see. At what age? Um, because you got that... Mm, seriously, right at 16. See? Yeah. When I did a high school play. And it was a comedy, and all I had to do is, every actor will tell you this, as you know. Right. You hear that laughter and you're, you're sunk. That, that does it. But um, then, right after that, I was quite young, I went to New York to the American Academy. Ah. And learned how to, basically, how to act. But I had people in my class like Grace Kelly. Uh -huh. Grace was in your class? Yes. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, we did a play together. We did. Before anyone had ever heard of a movie called High Society, there was a play called Philadelphia Story. Right. And she played the lead, the, and I played the other woman. Uh huh. Second Can woman. Can you imagine? No, I have never. I've interviewed people, hundreds and hundreds. Never heard anyone worked with Grace Kelly. Really? And school. You went to school with yeah, Grace Kelly. Yes, yes. That's and not in your resume. How come, girl? <laughs> because I don't care about Grace Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. No, uh, there were a lot of other wonderful, wonderful actors. Colleen uh, Dewhurst was a class great just actress. six months ahead of me. Uh -huh. Jason Robards, uh, Annie Bancroft was six mm -hmm. months under me. Uh -huh. um, I mean, we had many wonderful, wonderful actors at the Academy. The Academy at that time was based in Carnegie Hall, which very few people know about, because they have their own building and all right. that stuff now. Yeah. But at that time, uh, we had all the classes at Carnegie Hall in the little tower right next this to it. This is in the 50s, I would say. It's, uh, it's on 57th Street. Uh, no, I meant in the 50s. Or oh, 40s. the new one? No, no, no. When you were there at the Carnegie Hall, the studio, was yeah. in the 50s? 57th Street. No, I know that, but I'm talking about in the 50s when you went to school with uh, Grace Kelly. Oh, God, Kelly. you mean the 1950s? I thought we were talking yeah. about streets. No. Uh, you're going to pin me down. Everybody's going to know No, how that's old I okay. Am. Don't worry. I'm, I don't care because, unfortunately, once you get into a Broadway show, they damn well print it. Print it, yeah. They do, don't <laughs> and they? There's nothing you can do about you know. it. That but was, you don't uh, worry about age anymore. Anyway. No, I don't you care don't anymore. You don't care about that. 40, 1949, 40, 1950. 50. That's what I figured. I think the end of 50, we graduated. It was a yeah. two year course. Because I came know. out there in the 50s after. Yes? Yeah, I. I, I I studied with Kim Stanley for a oh while. My, really? I love Kim Stanley. Yeah, I almost studied with her, and I had spoken to her on the phone. When she was here in Hollywood? Yes. Yes. And then she died. She moved to Santa Fe. Oh, yes. Her daughter, and she was teaching acting at the University of Santa Fe. Really? Yeah, she's uh -huh. so great. Wasn't she good in The Goddess? Oh, my dear. You would be great in The Goddess. Oh, not quite. Well, not, thanks. you know what I mean. You know, comedy is your Do you remember feet. that other thing she did, uh, the uh, seance 
Oh, that was Seance great. For a wet Absolutely. Afternoon. Of course. What an actress. I saw that on 58th Street in that little theater across the street. On 58th. Oh, at the Paris. The Paris Theater. So oh. we're New Yorkers forever. Yeah, forever. Once New you're York. a New Yorker, you're always. You know a New something? I never like California. You do? You, are you feel the same way? No, I love California. Do you really? Because of the weather. Oh, okay. I okay. mean, I can't. But take you're it a New Yorker place. all the yeah, way, so baby. I'm afraid yeah. So. I am, yeah. So tell me, and then from there, you, you, the first Broadway show, the real first, very first Broadway show. Oh Dina my Dietrich. God! What was my first Broadway show? Oh. Oh, oh, <laughs> it was a little number called Here's Where I Belong, which was Here's the uh, musicalization of East of Eden. Uh huh. We opened and closed the same night. Really? Oh, yeah. Terrence McNally wrote the book. Uh huh. Uh, we had wonderful music. The guy, Alfred Urey, who wrote Driving Miss Daisy, right. was one of the songwriters on it. He wrote, I guess, the book. Mm -hmm. And, um, we had Walter McGinn and wonderful, wonderful, wonderful actors. Did you study singing? Uh, with David Craig. That's it. Only. Yeah. yeah. I never specifically... Because when you're a Broadway actress, you do it all. That's you do. What, that's you what do. you call a Broadway yeah. performer. My, I won't talk about my dancing, however. Does it matter? It doesn't matter. You, as long as they, they teach you to move. Yes, you know. exactly. Am I right? Exactly. That's it. Yes, that's Tell true. me about the funny girl. You know. Well, Funny Girl was... You were on uh, the uh, National Company. Yes, that was 1965, I believe. Uh -huh. And it was quite a tour. I signed up for being stupid and not knowing any better. Uh -huh. I signed up for a year. Did Mimi Hines had, go out on the road after, the, after she left Broadway? Mimi Hines. I don't know. I thought maybe she was with you. No, no, no. We had um, Marilyn Michaels. Oh, great, great who, impressionist. You know, who was Ooh, Marilyn Michaels? If anyone doesn't know, this lady does so many voices. Yes, yeah, she does, and she, of course, was doing Barbra Streisand at yeah. the time. And yeah, doing it wonderfully. One, yes. And uh, we had Lillian Roth as Mrs. Bryce. Lillian Roth. Yes. I'll never cry tomorrow. Yes. I'll, You're I'll kidding. Cry tomorrow. She no. was in that show. Mm -hmm. And uh, they fired her in San Francisco, and I was her understudy. Oh, a little of this, a little of that. She, she was crazy. She was. Yeah. The, so her lady. real life story is that true then? Drinking. Yeah, yeah. Lillian Roth, you met her and you worked with her. Yeah, I was her understudy. So, uh -huh. the sometimes at intermission, I'd hear on my dressing room, Lillian is gone. She's left the theater. <laughs> at intermission. <laughs> So I'd get out of my clothes as uh -huh. Mrs. Strakosh, uh -huh. and I'd get into Mrs. Bryce's clothes, and I'd be all ready, and I'd be in the mega and I'd, <laughs> she's back. <laughs> and I would do that many uh, times. Uh -huh. So finally they had to let her go in San Francisco, and then I played it, mm -hmm. the whole run in San Francisco. And then Nancy Andrews came in here in L.A., mm -hmm. and I went back to doing Mrs. Thank God, <laughs> to doing Mrs. Strakosh. <laughs> was your very first film? Do you remember your very first? Yes, I do, as a matter of fact. It was for Arthur Hiller. Go ahead. And it was a, a movie, at the time, it was called Rooter's Hooch. Okay. But I think they changed the name of it somewhere along the line. Right. It was with Timothy Bottoms, Richard Dysart. It was, uh, Timothy Bottoms was... He's a cute kid. I uh, know the whole Bottoms brothers. I, I I've know interviewed them all. And I think Sam they're a lovely family. Oh, he was brilliant. Wasn't Timothy. he? He really was. I like... Yeah. And was, was that the boy who did go on the ocean, Timothy? Did he take a boat around the world? I don't know. Oh, anyway, go ahead. I don't know. That's he was wonderful. I think I he's a marvelous about. actor and he mar is. marvelous and family. Yes, and they all come from, I think, Santa Barbara. Santa Barbara, you're like absolutely that. right. Yeah. Do you ever see any of them? Uh, I saw Sam once. Sam's my friend. He had a silver spoon. He a used lot. to hang around a lot. Really? Yeah. Oh, God. That's where all the actors hang out. Yeah, all the old actors. Old, <laughs> old actors. <laughs> silver my spoon age. in West Hollywood. My age. <laughs> I love you know, it. That was working with Arthur Hiller. That was thrilling. Uh -huh. You know, that was my first movie, and I was scared, you know whatless, but uh -huh. I got through it. I played Timothy's mother. Okay. And he was cuckoo. He was playing a Vietnam vet who had gone I remember that a little film. crazy. Yeah, I remember that. And movie. what's uh, Barbara Hershey? Hershey. Wonderful. Had changed her name at that point in time to Barbara Seagull, because I heard the story that she had somehow injured or had seen a seagull injured, and she decided to change her name to, to Barbara Seagull. Seagull. Oh, really? Seagull. No more Hershey. Mm -mm. For a long time, and then she went she back. Went back to. Hershey. to 
Yeah. Is that what happened? Mm -hmm. That's oh. what I heard. I don't know if it's Wasn't true. Wasn't she or married not. to David Carradine, I think, or something? I think like so. That, David yes. and her. Yes. You brought a clip today. I yes, I like did. to see this clip. What is this clip well, about? Well, I think Stephen Bochco is a genius, and anything that I can work with. I did NYPD for him, and then along came this show called Philly for Philadelphia. Right. Starring Kim Delaney and other wonderful actors. Right. And he hired me for the pilot, and they liked the character of the judge who brings her dog to court to and wears <laughs> a lot of makeup. This is actually based on two judges, two real-life judges. Uh -huh. The one who still is around brings her dog to court, puts them on the bench right next who to her. Who is that one? I don't know. You don't know. You're, I wouldn't say you if wouldn't I say did. It, I, no, I okay. wouldn't. Well, and then the other one who wears, you know, lots uh -huh. of makeup. And uh -huh. uh, she always wears flashy clothes under her judge's robe and makes sure that you see them. You know, oh. Like that. <laughs> So it was a fun character, okay. and uh, Stephen let me play it. I think I did okay, let's about 18 of them, so okay, let's, it was let's see quite it. a gig. Let's see it. <laughs> <laughs> Knock it off, both of you. You're making me cranky. Mr. Patel, could your conversation with the prosecutor keep you from speaking with Mr. Froman? Well, I, uh, I certainly wasn't looking forward to it. Your Honor, I moved to strike Mr. Patel's testimony inasmuch as Mr. Loomis essentially instructed him not to speak with me. I didn't do that. Mr. Froman, what if I give you half an hour to interview Mr. Patel and I instruct him to treat you with the utmost respect? Half an hour isn't long enough to conduct an effective interview, Your Honor. And given the lateness of the hour... No, I am not carrying this case over another day. Given the impropriety and its practical effect. Impropriety, Judge? You know prosecutors are explicitly barred from forbidding witnesses to speak to defense counsel. I'm striking Mr. Patel's testimony. Mr. Patel, you may step down. Your Honor, that's a drastic remedy given that Mr. Patel is the eyewitness. And not one that the court finds particularly persuasive. Do you have any other testimony that you'd like to present, Mr. Loomis? <sighs> no, Your Honor. The Commonwealth rests. Mr. Froman, do you feel compelled to put on a case? No, Your Honor. Defense rests. Then we're done. I don't need to hear closing arguments. I find the defendant not guilty. Mr. Becerra, you're free to go. We'll take a ten-minute break. Court will stand in recess for ten minutes. Mr. Loomis. I have had it with attorneys bad-mouthing each other. Now you're my example of the day. Go out and spread the word. On your honor. Counselor, it was a weak case. <laughs> yes, baby. Yes. <laughs> yeah, all the bad people. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> We always had a little, uh, every time I would carry the, uh, the dog off stage, I was able to ad lib. So uh -huh. I would say, all these bad people that we have to put up with. <laughs> or things like, uh, now that's a bad vibe, honey. And talk to the dog. You know. It was great. I yeah, had the best time. Wasn't your dog then? It's no, a, no, no, it's a trained dog. Trained it's dog. A, it's a, it's a showbiz dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mel Brooks, come on, tell me more about Mel Brooks. I just oh. love Annie Bancroft and Mel. I used to see them all the time. At the racetrack, and he was so good. Yeah, he's and I just uh, he must miss Annie. Oh, please! I don't even His, want to think about it. I yeah. know. I ran into her, uh, oh, probably maybe three or four months, months I guess, ago before she yes. passed. Yes. And uh, she always had a way of saying, "Oh, the producers." <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Mel and I. Uh, I'd, I only know him in a in a You were in the history way. of the world. But yes. Then, yes, I'd love that. Movie. I had a funny story because, uh, oh, well, everybody loves that scene with Madeline Kahn. You know, it's She's, just was precious. Was she a great actress? Yes, she was. Yes, so she sorry was. about her. Mel called and me young. in when I was I had just auditioned for History of the World, and he said, now, I want to warn you. You have to be very careful. I don't know how it's going to work out, but Madeline can be a little difficult. And just be aware of that. And I said, fine, okay. We got along like gangbusters. We had no problems. I adored her. She knew I adored her. Uh -huh. We had the best time doing that scene. But I always loved the fact that he warned me up front because uh -huh. he'd worked with her so much. He knew her, you uh -huh. know. And I guess sometimes if people didn't 
live up to her expectations or they weren't as perf perfect as mm -hmm. she thought they should be, she'd give them a problem. Mm -hmm. Why not? Mm -hmm. I think that's a very good philosophy myself. Yes, yes, yes. But the history of the world was just one of the best experiences. The guy from New Faces was in that. Ronnie Graham, was he in that? Ronnie Graham? He, You know, I only really paid attention to the part that I was in. Yeah, Ronnie which Graham was, was in that. From he New might Faces. have been in the in, French in, in version. The, oh, okay. With uh, King Louis and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. But I was only in the Roman uh, section with Caesar uh, and all yeah. that nonsense. Uh -huh. You know what? They had these little boys lined up and she sang the song about who she liked. Uh. No, no, no. Yes, yes. <laughs> no, no. Yes, yes. Well, they, the first time I saw that, we did this scene, the first time I saw this, the boys all came in, and they all had little fannies <laughs> hanging out. Mm -hmm. They were bare uh -huh. on, on the fanny. And then the makeup people came, came in, in and touched them up with rouge. So they <laughs> all like the fannies. Going down, <laughs> going down the line. How about the Golden Girls? Now, you do that. You've been on that show, the Golden Girls. Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. tell me about that show. I mean, that's... You know, all these women, they're so funny and... Oh, they're wonderful. Look at, look at that look cast. Look at all the cast. Know. Tell me. I mean, I was friendly with Estelle, and I've talked to Betty a few times. Um, B, I don't really know at all, and... Uh, Do you get compared with B, Arthur? Do you oh, yes. Ever? Unfortunately, yes. B, Arthur. Yeah. You do get compared, yes. Yeah, well... Is she a tough yeah. lady? She was there first, so... Yeah. Is she a tough lady? I don't know, because my relationship with her was strictly on the set. Yes, yes. You know, yes. I would see Estelle at a restaurant or, you know, yeah, whatever. Yeah, she used to hang around the Silver Spoon a lot. Did she? Oh, yeah. Yes, I love Estelle. Before my time, I guess. Yeah, yeah. But uh, B, uh, I really, you know, we only had a relationship across uh, uh -huh. when we were reading. Uh, to, but I played her sister on the thing, uh -huh. which was, we worked very well together. Yes, you did. Very and that, well. that funny one, there's a hurricane a-coming. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> The uh, practice. You've been on the practice years a lot. No, the practice at that point in time in 1976 yeah. was with Danny Thomas. I was a regular on, on that. On Danny Thomas. He played a yeah. doctor. Yeah. And then suddenly they stole the name, the practice. Oh, is that what they did? Lawyers. They yeah. do, yeah, yeah. yeah Working with Danny Thomas. What oh, a well, generous, what a, whew, well, what an experience. kind man. What yes. kind experience? He Well, he was... First of all, you had, he didn't trust anybody. He was until, Lebanese, wasn't he? Yes. Yeah. He didn't trust anybody until you proved to him that you could get laughs or that you could live up to him. I remember the first time when I auditioned with him and his son was one of the producers and um, we were in a little trailer somewhere or other uh -huh. and I had to read a scene with him. And at the end of the scene, I reached over and I did <laughs> this. He looked as though I shot him. Uh -huh. He was so stunned. Uh -huh. But he loved that. Because everybody was afraid of him. Yeah. Everybody you was you afraid. Did your, you no, did I didn't care. That's you know. right. So when I touched him, that yeah, sent off something and he yeah. said, she's for me. Yeah. It was what fun. gives you great pleasure in life, Dina Dietrich? Philly. I don't want to do Philly again. I had the you best Philly. time. Did what really? gives me great pleasure in life is yeah. acting. I'm an actress. You're an actress. That gives you great pleasure. Absolutely. And the and older you keep I keep working all I the know. time. Isn't that wonderful? That, that I just did a movie uh, for Hallmark Channel with uh, George Siegel. It's not right. any of my credits, I don't think. No, I haven't put go it ahead. in there yet. And somebody said to me, "Well, how long have you been in the business working on this movie right. thing?" And I suddenly re realized <laughs> I got my equity card in 1952. Uh -huh. 52. 1952. Most people weren't alive in mm -hmm. 1952. So I've had a long and very good career. So looking back at your career, you did have a good time then. Oh my God, yes. Everything I've done, I you would know, never regret anything. Good, because I interview a lot of people and I ask that question. Some people are bitter in life. They're not happy. Oh, They're I know. just not happy. I know. I, my best friend when I was younger was Jimmy Coco. Oh, I and loved him. We had a discussion about that one time. He had just done, uh, was doing Last of the Red Hot Lovers, right. which was what put him on the, yep. on the map. And he said, I often wonder if I would be bitter as I got older if I hadn't had any 
success in life. He said, now that I've done this, I know I'll never be bitter again, ever. And I don't think he ever was. And I feel the same way. As long as I can work, I don't care. Look at what I'm doing now. Can we talk about what I'm doing what now? What are you doing now? I'm you doing are doing, oh, that is going to bring that up. I you hope are so. Oh, honey, I didn't forget that. You are in a marvelous play I just saw at the Lost Theater. That's right, the Lost at Studio. The Lost yes. Studio, and it was wonderful. Thank you. And the, uh, the writer, his first play yes. is Aaron. William Soroy and Son. Son. Yeah. Aaron. And he's won many prizes for poetry, and he's written books. Yeah. He wrote one book that I happened to have read and was not even aware I was going to be working with right. him. But he wrote a book about uh, Carol Mathau, Carol Saroyan Sorry. Mathau, yes. and Gloria Vanderbilt, and Una O'Neill, who were three best friends. Can you imagine yeah, those three great. women? Amazing. And but he wrote this, this wonderful play. book about them before he got around to writing this play. Uh -huh. And he'd never written a play before, and it's just it's, it's called it's actually wonderful. called the Beach House or Beach House at the Beach at House. the Beach House. Yeah, and it's about his life. It's pretty much about his family, family. which is rather dysfunctional in a way. Right, and uh, the interaction among the uh, Saroyan clan yeah. and the Mathau yeah. clan. Yeah, and I play the grandmother of them all of Ma yeah. because she was some lady. Her name is Olga, in the play, and I think it was. Roshin, Roshin. Mm -hmm. She was Russian Jewish, mm -hmm. and she had like three husbands. And the last one was Marcus, who was the head of Bendix Corporation, mm -hmm. very wow. wealthy man, very uh -huh. big industrialist. And she was one of a kind. Mm -hmm. And um, playing her, I had to do some research and try to find out about right. her. And there were certain certain things about her that were not like me. Right. So I had to sort of search around and find a good character for Olga. But you did Olga. it, baby. Oh, wow. Oh, thank you. I went opening night, and guess who was in the audience? You. The gra me, I know. But the greatest one. <laughs> oh, great my God. We just about fainted when we heard. Tell me. Gore Vidal. Gore Vidal. We That's it, guys. <laughs> we didn't know about it until after. I don't think we could have gone on. Oh, yes, you know. could have. Oh, did you? I mean, I'm a you. huge fan of And his, he was know. crying. Did you know he was crying at the end? Oh, no. Really? Crying. Oh, that's so See, that's, nice. our, uh, that's what the writer was telling me. Wow. He was crying. Oh, that's Because I interviewed him as a, in, when I did it. And he said he was crying. Oh, wow. Garvadel crying. Hmm. And that's well, his first play. Because he said, the scene with the three women, he said, affected me so much yeah. that you should change the ending and make that the ending. And so Aram Saroyan yeah. did take mm -hmm. Gore Vidal's advice, and he yeah. did change the Oh, ending. he did? Oh, yeah. So he did listen to him. Yes, he did. And it's better now? It is. It, yeah, it makes it more sense. There's i got to come back and see it. Yes, How long is it going to be there now? Uh, I think we're running through Thanksgiving weekend. Weekend? Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. How's the crowds been? Very good. Good. We had almost all full houses, thank good, God. Good, good, good. It's a little house. I know, know. It's a small house, but it's a wonderful little theater. Isn't it? Those and his seats wife, are so comfortable yeah, for the and audience. And his wife... When you walk in the theater, the Lost Studio, his wife's got all the paintings. Yes. That's his wife's painting. That's right. And it's charming yes, paintings. Yes, it is. Pastels and beautiful. And they set up that gallery, and then if you walk into the other, other side, side, there are some more, more over there, too. Yeah, She's a wonderful painter. It's a wonderful little Lost Studio, yes. I call it. And that the air is. conditioning, I couldn't believe it. I said, this Great. is really modern. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Most yeah. places, you do equity waiver if you get any kind of air conditioning. Yeah, it's on La Brea. Lucky. It's on La Brea between first and second. Between first and, and second. And it's a wonderful little theater, and yeah. the play is doing I'm well. I'm so glad you saw it. Oh, Thank I you. loved it. Yeah. And I'm going to go see it again because of uh, Gore Vidal chain, get yes. his ideas. Yeah. Oh, I want to go see it again. Yeah. Has he been back since? I has don't it, believe so. Who else has been coming oh, to see? Oh, God, Any, I don't. I, you don't judge. I must tell you that I you don't. You don't do that. I say, don't tell me. You don't, don't want to know. Because the night, that, thank God they told me afterward, uh -huh. the night I knew Gore Vidal, I was stammering idiot. Mr. <laughs> I could hardly get it out, you know. <laughs> I have all your books at home, like an idiot. <laughs> you did the Lucy show. Yes. Tell me about the Lucy show. Well, first of all, I met Lucy because she did Danny Thomas's show, The yes. Practice. Yes. And the funny story about that, I played Danny's nurse, and she, Lucy played a homeless woman on that episode. Mm -hmm. And she comes into the um, examining room, and she sits up on the table, and as, her, as his nurse, I right. come in and I 
put the thermometer in her mouth, and then I'm about to take her uh, uh, yeah. blood pressure. Okay. And I was standing in front of her, and she's like this. All of a sudden, I felt something moving me like this. I thought, what? She had taken one of her legs, curled it around my leg, and moved me. And as she did it, she said, you're in my key light. <laughs> you're, I love it. <laughs> so I was standing, trying to get this blood pressure thing on her right. at a very awkward <laughs> angle. But boy, the lady knew. Man, oh man. I'm These a, actors and actresses, boy, they, the old time, they know their key lights, didn't she they? She knew everything. Yeah. Uh, Martin, I didn't realize I was doing that. I, the director put me there. I was standing there. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And then later, That's um, funny. Gary and, and Lucy had me come in and do one of the episodes of the last show that she did, uh -huh. where I played a homeless lady. Okay. And we got to go to, to trial together, and I sued her, and she sued me, and it was, it was a funny episode. And um, I just loved working with her because, I mean, God, that's, that's a legend, you know. What have you learned about everything? Yourself. Everything. Like what? Uh, yeah, give me an example. Well, like I don't Because you're such a great lady. Every oh, time I see, you. I used to see you on that commercial, <laughs> it just was hysterical. Uh, gays loved you. Tell oh, me yeah. why. Don't look at me that way. Gays Everybody love you. Love Mother they nature. love you. Yes, nature lady. But the gays especially. Well, it's pro I think it's the same reason that Somebody like B. Arthur, uh, somebody like Angela, the strong women. Women, that's what they like. Strong Betty women. Davis's. Yes. 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 Ethel Merman, strong yeah, ladies. Probably reminiscent Judy Garland. somewhere of their mothers. Yeah, I don't evidently. know. Evidently. But uh, <laughs> what have I learned, you ask me? Yeah. I've learned not to take myself serious. Oh, I like that. And you I've have a great have, sense of humor. And have young. fun. That's what it's all about. And I didn't when I was young. I was, you didn't? No. No, Why I, is that? I, well, because it was all about career, 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 you know. So you and, really... And uh, I would have been, what Jimmy said, I would have been bitter if I hadn't had any kind of success or any kind of a you career. You would have been. Oh, yeah. yeah. So that Mother Nature so really... that saved my saved ass. Saved you. Right. Forgive me. Yeah. No, that's right, honey. It saved you because... Yeah. And then from there, you got other rows, you know. A whole lot of stuff. A lot. Mm -hmm. A lot. You know, when you're young, you start adding stuff to your resume. Yeah. <clears throat> As you get older, you're taking it off, taking it off, <laughs> taking it off.